I was surprised and perturbed by this because I personally don't think this is that big of a news or that surprising. But I think some people online are almost a little bit pissed off about this sort of stuff. But let's just quickly talk about this because I think this is a really interesting topic to kind of get into, right? So this is courtesy of the Shade Barrow. So the Shade Barrow put out this post regarding an artist called um, Ola Sloan who's known for doing this type of artwork you see here on the screen where he kind of de depicts like gollywog type of figures which are basically black figures with like really big lips that were used as kind of racial tropes back in the day kind of racist kind of edgy whatever it is what it is and he just basically these are basically his main parts of his show and stuff right or his paintings and what he does and how he depicts certain characters in the work that he puts out there um recently um, three Yoruba brothers by Sloan was sold for £31,750 in the UK's largest auction house, right? So Sloan has been able to sell one of his artworks, which is featured there, for £31,750. And everybody was kind of got obviously kind of pissed off about it because they're thinking, oh, these racial tropes again, blah de blah blah blah. Me personally, I've always felt as if like it when it comes to criticism online, especially when it comes to art, it's fairly difficult to say something shit without sounding like you're a hater but i think unfortunately probably most people online are haters secretly maybe i don't know because i can say as somebody that makes art myself as somebody that's painted for what as I, i've been i've been painting since i was like i don't know 10 years old or some shit right um i took art in college i took art in uni um whatever right it is what it is I think I could speak from a point of like experience, quote unquote expertise, and say I've just never really vibed with the guy's art. I think it's a bit reductive. I think it's a little bit easy. I think it's a little bit pointless, low hanging fruit type of stuff, right? But it's telling his story, it's his perspective, it's his view of the world, it's his artistic expression. But I can say from my own taste level that I think it's shit without sounding like, oh, I want his success. Because I think a lot of people online, I saw this one particular girl who does art herself and it's kind of what you'd expect from like a, you know, for lack of a better term, from like a black artist. It's loads of like black women in front of like, you know, trees and shit looking voluptuous and sensual and looking like goddesses because that's why, I don't know why a lot of like, you know, contemporary artists, especially in the black field, always seem to have that in their artwork. That's the only stories they can tell about, you know, let me like have these black figures in my paintings standing next to a tree or whatever. It's like, okay, cool, we get it. I think people like that, because technically that girl from what I saw was a better quality, was a better painter if you're like looking for more realistic depiction of people she does paint people amazingly well with like oil color like amazingly well right but just because you paint better than this guy or you can depict humans better they look more lifelike more realistic doesn't mean you're a better artist i think we need to kind of like separate those two things just because somebody puts just because rothko will paint um an amazing canvas that just is like two blocks of red doesn't mean because you can paint a photorealistic picture of messy that you're a better artist than rothko it doesn't work that way you know what I mean? Art is incredibly subjective, but it's also very kind of like layered and meta and like metaphorical. Like there's loads of things going on in there at once. But if I could, if, if it's me and I'm just judging art from what I see based on the exhibitions I go to, based on the private views I go to, based on the art books I buy, based on my years doing art in college, my years doing art in uni, my years doing art by myself in my own room and shit, I can just say personally for me, it's not for me. Because I know what kind of art that I, ta I like and what I resonate to. And I can look at that stuff and not like it. But the great thing about art, especially nowadays, is that him being around doesn't really matter about the quality of his work. It's more the symbolism of it. The fact that you've got like a dark-skinned Nigerian guy, right, painting those types of figures and then be able to sell them for that kind of money at the UK's biggest auction house, that's the win. That's the W, because what that means is that even if I think, myself, I think this art isn't good, what it means is that, oh, if his art that I think isn't good is doing that, then what can I do if I think my art is better, right? But he has to be there first, because now it gives me hope that I can now do my thing because he's doing his thing. But the girl online, this particular girl that I'm thinking of, she didn't sound like that. She was sounding more like, why can't that be me? Why is he selling his artwork for 31000 but I can't sell a painting on my Shopify for £200 or £500? That is where your mind... That's, that's, that's a disconnect. And that's where I think, in general, 
where criticism online kind of sways it kind of gets a bit messy which is why i think sometimes that's probably why a lot of people say that you can't really be like a a content creator and also be in a space that you're doing it in, right? So I think some people said that about like, I think stand up or about DJ, like I do and stuff like, it's hard to like critique stuff without sounding like you're hating because you're trying to pursue a career in it yourself. So if I'm commenting on like, let's say Amelia Lenz, people would say, oh, it's hard for me to be objective because I'm trying to make it. And if I think she's shit, then it's me saying I wish I was her, which isn't the case. But I just how people say that because that girl that I'm thinking of on Twitter, she definitely did sound, she definitely, she definitely did sound like she was just hating and she wanted to be that guy instead. Which I, which I think is dumb because everyone's journey is different. Um, and sometimes people's journey or sometimes people's um, place in life is to be this person. To be this person that's able to kind of put this artwork out, be seen, open the floodgates, and then kind of everyone kind of burst through. And plus, the guy's got loads going on. He models. He's part of that whole creative scene. Like, he's got whatever with, um, what you call it, Cortez and shit. They're all kind of loosely affiliated. Um, he's got his own coffee shop. They do, like, draw... Like, I went on their website. They do, like, live events. and do, like, live painting and drawing stuff. Community base. He's always showing off his family online, which is great to see. Like, he's, I'm with my, my girlfriend, my wife, my kid. Good family values, all that sort of stuff. And to be honest, too, let's be honest... Let's be honest. If art is meant to be personal expression, if art is subjective, if art is about telling your own story, doesn't this guy kind of look like the Gollywogs anyway? Anyway, he's calls himself ugly online. Maybe because that's what he got told when he was younger and shit, and he's got a complex around it or whatever, insecurities around it. So he kind of speaks about it in general. But he kind of looks like one. So why not depict yourself in your own paintings and also try and talk about a message? Try and like, you know, try and, I don't know, Try and take away the power of the Gollywog. Try and take away its racial, racist, insulting, abusive, hurtful symbolism and try to kind of own it. Try to reclaim the fact that people called you ugly in school and said you wouldn't amount to anything. And now here you are selling paintings for 31,000. You're up. You're winning. So I don't think it's a bad thing. It really isn't. It's just whether or not you like it or not. Me personally, I think it stinks. I'd never hang this shit on my wall. I'd never put it in my gallery. But I'm happy for him and I think him being here is proof alone that you can make it too. So all these guys and girls out there that are painting pictures of like black women standing in front of fucking palm trees and shit and complaining that they're not the ones who are up there. Bro, I don't know. Improve your paintings. Maybe think, you know, juxtapose these stuff's a bit more interesting. Do you know what I mean? Instead of having a fucking black woman standing in front of a palm tree, maybe have her standing in front of a group of NF white bald guys running towards her and she's just smiling and not fucking caring. I don't know. You know, throw something a bit interesting. Let's let's mix it up a little bit. Let's not do everything super realistic. Let's do maybe some ex some, 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 some some nice expressionism, right? Some nice cubism, right? Let's maybe morph, let's maybe twist the, you know, what, what a woman's meant to look like in your your eyes or maybe how it looks at online let's mix it up a little bit maybe that's when you can get as successful as this guy because all this other like oh i wish i was him stuff online it's dumb it's bullshit it doesn't really go anywhere and if anything that sort of mindset in my opinion is what losers do losers always try to externalize oh he's doing this oh it's like there's not one spot there's not only one wall in the world to hang pieces of artwork. Just because his one sold for 31,000 doesn't mean your one can't sell for 31,150. Just because he sold for one for, for more than yours doesn't mean he's better than yours. It's just what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely ridiculous. It's really super dumb. But maybe it speaks to the crabs in the barrel mindset that exists in art in general. Because the contemporary art world, especially in the UK, is very white. Yeah, it's very kind of whitewashed. Um, it's very controlled by the galleries. Um, maybe that's why. Because of that, there's limited opportunities. Um, and everybody feels like if that one person gets in through the door, I can't get in myself. But that's not how it works, personally. I don't think so. Because him just being around, him being allegedly a Nigerian British artist, which I always heard that kind of term. People always kind of, you know, especially English people, they always do that. It's never just British. It's, it always has to be like, you know, where you're, like, whatever, cool. Nigerian British artist. This guy's come from Nigeria to the UK and has somehow infiltrated the art world. If he, if if this is not a sign that anybody, anything is possible, especially doing this, that's the thing. Think about it this way. He's infiltrated the art world on his own terms doing the this type of artwork. If you think this is terrible, and he's not that good, then why don't you go and do it? Why don't you go and do it? And if you're not doing it, maybe you're doing something wrong. 
It's not to do with him. Not to do with auction house. Stop being petty. Stop being flipping jealous and shit. That is ugly. Um, really is ugly. And if anything, it takes away the ability for people like myself who just want to crit critique the art and not the artist and shit and just say, hey, do you like this just or no? And I can say no without it sounding like a hater. But because I say that, or because they say what they say, when I say what I say, it kind of sounds like what they said, you know? Because if anything's not praise, it's kind of hate, in internet speak, which is fucking ridiculous because people think, oh, if you like something, you should talk about it. If you don't like something, you should not talk about it, which is fucking, quite fucking dumb. But he did respond as well. His response was a bit dumb, to be fair. His response sounded like he was... His response kind of... Let me, let me read it to you. So artist Sloan responds to criticism of his work that sold recently. Here's what he said on the Shea Barra. You lot... You lot are fucking neeks. You know I'm going to make sure my son and girlfriend never see poverty or stress. I'm going to see to it that all of you that are praying on my downfall so you can witness my family suffer will see. I will put it in your faces every day. Watch me. Doesn't that sound like a bit like a juju curse or something? Is that juju? Or is he just saying, watch me stunt on you, watch me get money? What is he doing? Is, he, is, that, is that a curse? Is that like a hex? <laughs> what is he doing there? Eh? I will put it in your face. Like, what is he actually saying there? Is he saying, hey, watch me stunt on you. Watch me buy another Range Rover Sport. Watch me open up two more coffee shops. Watch my kid dripped up in more designer baby clothes. Like, what is he actually saying there? That looks a little bit wild. But I also understand him because the timeline... <laughs> The timeline was going crazy. Like, <coughs> all jokes aside, I understand his response because if you saw the timeline, if you saw the timeline when this guy was the topic of conversation over the past weekend, that's why people say the UK is bad vibes. The UK is bad vibes because the timeline was, oh, this art isn't good, but like fucking essays, tweet essays everywhere. People had so much to say. And it's again, that's why proof that in general, the UK is bad vibes and you can't really like thrive and live free the way you want to. You know, you can't really flex your muscles the way that you want to. It's just, and I'm sure if it's, I'm not even, I don't even call it crabs in the barrel. I just think it's just pure hate. This country is just full of fucking haters from our government, from the royal family, from the police, right? From fucking local councils. Everybody's hating. Everybody's a fucking hater. That's what they are in this fucking country. That's what I'm seeing online because all you had to say was, raw. I can't believe this guy sold that shit artwork for 31000 but props to him, a young black man in a contemporary art world, which is amazingly whitewashed, making it, especially in the UK, knowing the barriers that we have and shit, right? Especially looking the way that he does, sounding the way that he does, being from where the country that he's from, he's made it. That's an impressive thing that he's done. Congrats to him. Salute to him. And that's also all the motivation that I need to go and do my art. That's all it should have been. It should have been a fucking, you know, a deep dive into this guy's background. You are spitting. It'd be better to see Cubism, Impressionism, Pointism, and what have you. Same thing as Black Walk Recasting. It's free 99 rather than creating original stories. Is that exactly, exactly, exactly NJ Ranger? There just needs to be, like, I don't know. I, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I've always believed in extreme ownership. And I think even more so in the creative field. I think there is easy, it's very easy to just point the finger at somebody and say, why aren't institutions letting me in? Why aren't these people giving me permission? But unfortunately, nowadays, with the power, with the power, with the power of this little thing here, of this little smartphone that we all have, different versions of it, an Android, an iPhone, whatever version you have, even if you're using your tablet, right? Even these days, you can get fucking, you can get um, emulators that you can have on your, on your desktop to use as a kind of a phone. It's impossible nowadays with this gadget in your hand to ever say something is impossible. It just is because we have the access to absolutely everything that you want is on this little fucking gadget here. We all use the same phone, the same platforms. It's the same thing. So if something isn't working for you, I personally think you have more control over it than you actually think you do. The gatekeepers and shit don't really have much control over you anymore. Everything's kind of been somewhat democratized for better or worse. The barrier of entry has been lowered for better or worse, but it means there's no more excuses. Now you cannot say anything else about, oh, this person, nah, brother, no. If there's diversity hires going around, why can't you also be a diversity hire? Why does that have to be one? It could be as many as you want. If there's a lack of representation, why can't you be the person representing for people? Do you know what I mean? Like you have to always, put, you always have to kind of look inwards because you're the only one that can change you as opposed to trying to change whole systems and governments. Like, like it's, it's almost impossible to break the hold, the stranglehold that galleries have on the art world. 
or the art industry or the art market it's almost impossible to break to break that fucking grip that they have on you know how to get into certain galleries and shit but guess what you can do you can make your own art you can set up your own online gallery you can you can, you can fucking hire a pop-up space and these days pop-up spaces are not that much money if you you know save up a couple you know what you call it uh amounts of money from a month that you would have paid to, you know to buy a bit of weed or some or, or grams of fucking cat you can probably save money for a little pop-up studio yourself there's no excuses anymore you can do it online you can do it fucking in the in physical like whatever you want you can do it's just about you trying to put your foot forward as opposed to waiting for someone to give you something and hand you a fucking i don't know like a scholarship a bursary or whatever it may be to do a certain thing save your money do you know what I mean? Work a bit, save your money, and then kind of go from there. But, you know, unfortunately, people are kind of, don't kind of think this way. But, again, big up Ola Sloan. Um, you know, again, appreciate him just being around and representing for us black folks in the art world. It's amazing to see somebody this young creating this type of work be able to succeed on his terms because this never happened before in the past, by the way. It's the same thing like with UK music. UK music back in the day had to kind of cater to the general public, had to kind of cater to the white audiences. Nowadays, you're getting guys and girls on fucking records talking about how they fucking slain their ops, how they poking up this man, poking up that man, right? And it's like pure unadulterated music from the hood that's been able to kind of permeate into the charts that never used to happen before and that's an amazing thing to see it doesn't mean because they're doing it or that shit no no, no. no it, it means if they can do it with sometimes with a fucking mask on sometimes with the same type of beat same type of lyrics not really going anywhere and it's still successful that means you can do it too that's all that it means so happy to see him be successful i get the criticism of his art because i don't like it myself but it doesn't mean because he's doing it you can't do it too just get better just do more and stop fucking complaining that's what i would say stop fucking complaining but again what do i know